you can absorb light. I can see it. And Kamala. Who's Kamala? Hi. She can turn light into physical matter. I could totally show you. No! Nia, yeah, first of all, congratulations Thank on the you. film. And I really want to start here because mm -hmm. I know for a lot of folks, Marvel is maybe something they maybe want to do. But for you, this was a passion. Mm. This was a nerdy expertise. And it started <laughs> yeah. with a crazy pitch to Kevin Feige. So I'd love for you to talk about your Marvel fandom and how this started with that pitch. Oh, it didn't start with a crazy pitch. Not crazy. I waited until I was inside. They hired me. And then I was like, Kevin. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. I'm like, hello. Here are all my ideas. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, no, I am. Um, you know, my initial conversations were with um, Mary Lovanos, the exec on this film. And she basically told me that they wanted to have the three women in the film, that they're going to be switching places. And she told me about some of the sequences that they wanted to do in the film. And I was like, oh, this is going to be really exciting. This is going to be really fun and different. And uh, and so when I went into pitch, my big thing was like, on one hand, here's how I would do some of these big sequences and these set pieces. And on the other hand, like here's the emotional underpinning that I want to bring into this film. Mm. Um, and so that's kind of how we, we got started. Well, the emotional underpinning really sort of, I think, lies within these very three unique, incredibly powerful women mm. but the relationship everyone's very interested in is Carol and Monica and yeah. where they are can you talk a little bit about mm. where they are in the characters and really what Tiana and Brie wanted to bring to this yeah. very interesting family reunion for sure um yeah I mean everyone watched WandaVision and saw that look Monica gave where she was like <laughs> Carol mm, you know and I I was shook when I saw that and so to be able to actually be the one to show what it was and see them kind of reconcile was really exciting. Um, yeah, Carol's got the universe on her shoulders. She's got this burden. She feels this burden to to take care of everyone in the universe, you know, and, and obviously that's an impossible job. And I think we explore that psychology. We explore what that is for her. But also we're able to just show Monica dealing with grief, like not just the loss of her mother, but also the loss of her, her aunt. The other thing I really want to talk about, and you've already alluded to it, we mm. see a little bit in the commercials, and that is the fight sequences mm. in this. I yeah. mean, the way their powers sort mm. of combine in yeah. this moment, we kind of see them switching. Mm. We know from Miss Marvel that the out-of-body experiences are real. Yeah. Talk about how difficult that was to set up those action sequences, mm. knowing these actors were going to be changing, and the work they had to do for that. Yeah, so first of all, they are amazing. Um, Brie... Everyone knows she she works out. She gets strong. She really wants to be prepared for this. Um, and Ma and Tiana like did the same. They were just they were so amazing and they were so physical and they were so inside of it. And also you know especially with with Tiana like talking about what Monica was gonna do like wanting there to be a journey inside of the physicality of these fight scenes. It's like mm -hmm. she's learning how to use these powers so she'll get better as the movie goes on. Um, and so as someone who loves fight scenes like good fight scenes, it was a real privilege to be able to do to do a bunch in this film, but also to figure out how to map the powers into it and the switching into it. So for me initially it was like started on the page. It's like okay, we have especially that big first fight scene. I try to be really specific when we were writing it because that was going to be the map that everyone used to figure out, okay, this this fight chunk will be this and this and that and that and this person will be switching here and then we'll stay here and then, you know, it's like, but because it's so chaotic, we really wanted to have like a road map. Mm -hmm. And then we just get all the department heads, heads in and we figure out, okay, what's going to be second unit? What's going to be main unit? What's going to be VFX? What's going to be practical? What are the passes we need to do for one moment? Because like, every switch that we have, you have the first actor and the second actor the background, you know, maybe something else to come in, have a pass with the lighting so that we have, like, these bracelets that light up so that we have actual interactive light, you know. So many things to think about. And I have the best AD in the world, Jack Ravenscroft, so he was able to just, like, organize it all for us. And then at the end of the day, when it was time to shoot, it was just about getting the call sheet. I do love that. And you make it sound easy, but like literally in my head, I'm like, but wait, but what happens when you have to then move in the stunt director? It's like, well, we need this shot on her. And yeah. I, I really love how in all of that, you still got their like sisterly dynamic. Yeah. All of these women. Mm. Talk about that in particular, because mm. it's very interesting. It's new superhero that's maybe better at their powers than the like they they sort of between them as women but mm -hmm. then also as superheroes have different places that yeah. they sort of are so talk about how they became this again trio of power and light i think what's great about them is that they have different connections with each other or at least kamala and monica have a different connection with with carol and those connections that they have it, they're so integral in their own individual development and also in integral to them becoming a team and so, you know, when we meet Carol, like, I think she's a little jaded. She's been doing this for a very long time. She's really isolated. And then you have her niece who is upset with her. And then you have this girl who thinks, like, 
she's the best thing in the world. Mm. And so I think living in that, the three of them, they start to learn how to be a team and work together. Kamala has to realize she's also just a human being, you know, even though she is Captain Marvel. And Monica also has to realize, oh, she's had to be Captain Marvel. Yeah. Um, she's not just my aunt. So, you know, I think it helps. That dynamic was really important to me and it was really fun to, to put together. Um, I know in this process, you talked mm-hmm. to a lot of other Marvel directors mm-hmm. sort of like going in to be like, all right, put me in coach. What, what advice yeah. do you have? Yeah. And I loved that you said that Ryan Coogler's simple advice was be yourself. Yeah, he's just uh, a good guy. He really <laughs> is, such though. a good human, yeah. Like, very much so. Yeah. But I'm curious, what did that mean on set for you? And how did you make this movie? How mm-hmm. did you stay true to that on set? So one of the biggest things for me was that this was a joyful experience. Um, talking to Brie, we both were like, this has to be fun. We're making a superhero movie. You know, yeah. like, we get to do this. It's amazing. So um, when I was hiring every department head, you know, I that was some, a big thing I said. One, it's like, no like I you know don't deal with yellers or drama or any of that um, but the other thing is like let's bring a group of people together who are yes talented yes amazing other jobs but also are dedicated to like good vibes <laughs> so good vibes only. Um, yeah. so yeah for me that was really important and that's how I kind of approach all of my work and knowing that I could take that and put it and bring it on this really big um, scale was really really gratifying I love that. Good vibes only. Like, yeah. put some sage, get some good music <laughs> yeah, on set. Yeah, start smudging. You know, I mean, set. seriously. <laughs> uh, th- I would think that sage mm. to the vibe of the sh- film because the thing I really like that to see is how funny it is, how yeah. funny Sam is, how funny He's Bree great. is. Yeah. Talk about how y'all sort of dialed up the laughs for this one because mm. I really do think people are going to be surprised with how zany and chaotic it is yeah. from the most serious moments of emotion to yeah. these, like, crazy fight sequences. Yeah, I, I, coming into the movie, I was like, the movie has to be funny. Like, I'm also my DP and I would talk about it. We're like, it has to be funny. Um, because I think for me, and it wasn't like, let's have a joke every minute. It was more like, when you're with your friends, mm-hmm. you're laughing so much, you know? And I think the warmth that I wanted to have on set and to be on in the movie, I think humor naturally comes out of that. And mm-hmm. so I thought, I was like, if we can, they're all really funny in different ways, the the three leads, like in their personal lives. And so I was like, if we can bring that to the, into the, onto screen, and we can like lean on the Khan family too because they're so funny and wonderful, but it, a lot of that comes from warmth and, and that feeling of family. Mm. Then we'll not just have a funny movie and a fun movie, but we'll also have a movie that feels really real and human. The other thing I want to talk about, we've mm. already talked a lot about a Brie and her coming back from the second iteration. Mm. What do you think folks are going to be most surprised about? Folks that were huge fans of the first Captain Marvel mm-hmm. in this one, what are they going to see this time from Carol that maybe they haven't seen before? Uh, the Rainbow Crocs. Okay, uh, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> And everything those represent, that's going to be, they're going to be like, what? When I can't wait. Okay, Rainbow <laughs> Crocs. I now have that, and I'm going to be thinking Lauren hard about that. Yeah. Uh, another person that you had on set for this one that's part of the original Captain mm. Marvel is Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. And, like, I would say if I'm going to start my first Marvel movie, I'd like to have him in it. Because yeah, it's sort of like you get all the encyclopedic knowledge. What yeah. do you think he sort of brought, again, as sort of the elder statesman of the MCU, quite literally giving birth to it yeah. <laughs> in the Avengers? Literally, yeah. Um, yeah. What did he sort of, like, uh, tell you about on set? Because I know he's also also very like that person on set that would you know be like hey you got it (laughs) he was so generous and supportive and not just with me but also with the rest of the cast he's so wonderful he was so wonderful to work with and because he is the elder statesman of the mcu he's like the dad of the mcu that's really what we how we wanted to kind of portray him in this film so he spends a lot of time with the Khan family because you know it's kamala's parents and the parent the dad of the mcu like worried for their girls you know yeah. and so and so you know he's been through a lot uh in the mcu um you know he's been a lot and through a lot in secret invasion and and we get to have him here kind of being where I think a lot of people love him just being the guy who's like, you guys got this. Go off and be amazing. Yeah. yeah, That's what you need at this point. Yeah. Like a very like proud dad at graduation exactly. type moment. <laughs> exactly. Um, and his and Bree's dynamic. Uh, again, amazing. the hugest tragedy that they're not here is that I get to talk to the two know, of them I just know. bust on each other. Yeah. Um, the other thing I did want to talk to you about is because this is an MCU movie and mm. like I do have to say getting the Marvels the same year we got Beyonce, I feel like there was some black girl <laughs> magic that had to have it. <laughs> and I yeah. felt that in the needle drop just talk about some of the really mm-hmm. awesome, I think, music that you guys used in this one mm-hmm. to sort of like drive that one. And oh, the Missy Elliott. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, like literally, like it's yeah. really that. Was that something that was mm. from the script, or did you guys come to that later? Uh, we had a different song initially. It was really? also it was also um, a black artist, um, but um, you know, one of the um, so my editor Katrine Hedstrom, who we've worked together for 
literally everything I've ever done, including um, my shorts, including Top Boy, which had a lot of needle drops. She is a master of needle drops. And so Interstellar is a big one that she was like, what if we did this? Boop. And I was like, that's perfect. Thank you. You know, and and um, and I'm pretty sure because it's like who did what? Who knows? But I'm pretty sure she also dropped that Missy Elliott in there. And so like the mind meld happening is always great. But yeah, like. I think this is what happens when you have like long-term collaborators. Is what happens when you have like women, women of color. Like you know, it, you just get more of that kind of culture in, into into the film. Flavor. It yeah. is all about the flavor. Yeah. And again, with these three leads, they bring it from like the jump. Yeah. The other thing I will say is, look, you haven't talked about it. I want to talk about X Men. Like I really want to say this because like we haven't even said the M word, and you've been like keeping your fandom in check. But I yeah. think I've talked to you on other movies about how you're like, no, the MCU is going to be different when we hit this phase. So mm. talk about how it's like you're directing the first film that really leans into the idea that we have mm. mutants in the MCU. Yes, I, you know, it's funny, I didn't even think about it because like this, we're not, it doesn't really have anything to do with it, but Kamala's a mutant and I'm so what happy. What it doesn't have anything to do with it? Hold up. In the sense of like, in the sense of like, it wasn't like, you know, Charles Xavier wasn't like, hello, welcome, you know what I mean? It's it's really about these three women, but it's cool to have like you know a woman who got her powers because she walked through a radiating uh, shield barrier of a witch X, and another one who got her powers in an explosion, and another one who got them because she's a mutant. You know, it's just really it's really cool to see. Oh my God, actually, Nick Fury is the bald guy in yeah. this one, so there's connections everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask another risky one here yeah. because look, we we know what happens, right? Mm-hmm. We know that there's gonna be a moment after the credits. Yes. Just tell me, like this is me and you here, mm-hmm. so like don't play the yeah, like just, I'm yeah. a Marvel director. Let's mm-hmm. talk like this is this yeah, is yeah, like just me and you. No one's here. No one was yes, there. Yeah. Come on. So mm-hmm. what what can we look? What we so got? what happens is <laughs> um, the tag in the tag it is the best uh, tag ever. She said that. <laughs> <laughs> It's one. I think it's one of the best. Ugh. Genuinely. Okay. Yeah. Any, give me a word. Give me something that tells me what I can look forward to with this. T- just like a little a susan. Word. Give me the vibes. Here we go. Give me the vibes of the after credit scene. Uh, the word would be huh? Question mark. Girl, that's <laughs> the vibes of all of them. <laughs> I think especially right now, seeing mm. women team up, this yeah. is such a great moment. But with these three particular identities of these three women mm. right now, what would you say to ladies who are like, because I feel like this is another chance to have a Barbie moment of women <laughs> empowerment, to come yeah. and have like a real mm-hmm. like awesome female empowerment type mm-hmm. superhero story. Mm-hmm. So what would you say to the ladies who you want to maybe get tickets for, mm. for Captain Marvel's, like why they should? It's... I think what's great is that we have three very different women at the center of the film. And, you know, sometimes when you have a, a movie about a woman hero, it, the onus is on them to represent every woman, but that's not possible. And so to have three women, you know, we get a little bit more, <laughs> you know, uh, covered. But it's really great to see how different they are. And, and in their differences, I think it allows people to realize they can be whoever they are. And that's beautiful and wonderful. So if you want to have a good time with three amazing women who make you feel good about yourself, I think you should come see the movie.